good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all members and spouses to an event in the Fit at Flow series. You'll be surprised to know, friends, that more than 40% people suffer from some form of chronic pain, be it a headache, arthritis, back pain, or other musculoskeletal conditions. Consider the annual cost of this pain, the healthcare expenses, lost income, and lost productivity. But the question is, can we fight this silent epidemic? Can we say no to pain? To answer this, we have here with us today the renowned osteopath and sports physiotherapist from Germany, Dr. Nick Bauer. Friends, Dr. Bauer is a specialist in pain management and has given workshops to physiotherapists and doctors in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Hello, Dr. Bauer. Very warm welcome to you. We are grateful you made Hello. the time to be here with us today. Nice to join the event. Thank you so much for your invitation, guys. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm very happy and proud to be here and to join. Dr. Bauer is the wellness instructor of Real Madrid football, the German national football team, royal family of UAE, and several other celebrities from across the globe. On the request of Luke Catino, Dr. Bauer joined Reset as the head of osteopathy and sports physiotherapy and brought his amazing knowledge and talent to India. Let me quote Dr. Med Karsten, doctor of the German national football team. Nick is one of the best physical therapists with whom I have worked in, with in my entire medical career. His medical knowledge in all areas is outstanding. Through his extensive professional qualifications, he was able to significantly help injured athletes and general people heal faster. What a testimonial. I think that says it all. Dr. Bauer, we are all looking forward to learning from you. In conversation... Thank you. Thank you so much. In conversation with Dr. Bauer, we have Rashmi Dabriwal. Rashmi is a chartered accountant and a budding entrepreneur. She is the founder of the House of So, a co-learning and a co-fitness studio. You take it from here. Hello, Dr. Nick. It is going to be super exciting to be talking to you over here today on one of the most intriguing subjects, how to live a healthy and pain-free life. So while I was scripting today's questionnaire, my 10-year-old daughter just asked me, who is a physiotherapist? And my twin daughter had a very cute reply to it. She was like, Mama, I know this. He's the one who makes a skeleton rock and roll. I was like, whoa, that's a perfect intro. So Dr. Nick, my first question is centered around the skeleton. Can you talk us through how each muscles and joints in our human body as a whole are interconnected? How they are in the connected. Um, we have around 650 muscles, 206 to 211 bones, and mostly they are coming to a center of your body, which we call pelvic. Okay, your pelvis is actually the middle of your center of your body, and all the muscles are coming from up and are coming from down and meet each other in the middle of your pelvis. I am here, yes, in the middle of your pelvis, and um, each muscle is related to each other, what we call actually muscle chain yeah each muscle have a ligament a tendon a bone which is connected to the whole area of the muscle system and that's how we connect it that means when you have some issues usually on your shoulder we also have to check your issue regarding your shoulder issues regarding your feet regarding your knee it means we have to make a full checkup in osteopathy to understand where is the pain coming from and What's the root cause therapy for you? That was really mindful. I was just going through one of your conversations with Liu Putino, wherein you rightly pointed out that 10 out of 12 Indians in general are suffering either from some sort of neck issues or lower back issues because the reality check is that we are not moving much and sitting for 14 to 16 hours a day. So can you suggest some therapeutic stretches which can keep our joints and muscles active and pain-free. Okay, I will do it. Let me please first explain why I always sit, I say we are sitting around 8 to 14 or 16 hours in a day. Some people will say, Nick, I'm not sitting at all 16 hours. I can tell you something, guys. The point is we are sitting in the office usually um, 8 hours. 
We are sitting when we have a meal. We are sitting when we watching TV. And we are even sitting when we going to sleep. How we sleep, we are usually ending up in a fetal position, means in the side position. And it's exactly the same position like you sitting on a chair. That's why we say in osteopathy, we're sitting around 16 hours in a day. Yeah, means all your muscles which are doing a flexion. Flexion means I'm sitting, let me just stand up and show it. I'm sitting the whole time, means I always use the same muscles. Yeah, no time. Uh, I'm also using the same muscles all the time that's just overused. Think about the scenario. I'm going with you on the stairs and say, Rashmi, please walk the stairs the whole day up and down, how you will feel in the evening. You will feel exhausted, tired, and your muscles are burning. You are ending up mostly in the same position every single day, and these muscles are just overused. Even your eyes, your neck, and your, what we call, piriformis and uh, hip flexors are there overused because with each screen, what I'm looking in my laptop, in my phone, I always see blue light. Means your eye muscles are just getting tired and your eye muscles are connected to your neck spine, what we call uh, head joints and to your lower back as well and to your traps. Means when we have some eye pain, mostly we have even to fix your shoulder, your traps, your masseter here, your temporalis muscle here, means this area, this area, and your trap area are connected. And what you can do for that is quite simple. You just have to close your eyes and you say, I see a watch in front of me. I'm closing my eyes and I say, okay, I move my eyes up now to 12 o'clock, to 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and I'm going the whole watch clockwise and I can do a stretch. Each stretch of that have to at least be for 30 seconds and you feel already a big difference. The next thing what you should do is a stretch for your traps and the best stretch what you can do for that, even when you sit, you can say, okay, I put my right arm far away from my thorax. I move my head, left ear, left shoulder and everything what is far from each other is actually a stretch. Mostly people are ending up in this position. That makes no sense. Have to be the opposite means abduction, means just move your arm to the other side. Left ear is going to your left shoulder. You are sitting straight or standing straight. And now you pull your arm down how much as you can. Yeah. And now just look in your stretch and you have a proper stretch all over here on your traps. To make it more difficult, you just face your hand like you are reading a newspaper or a book. Look in your hand, face it, and pull your arm and shoulder down, and you feel already a good pain release. This stretch you should hold for two minutes. Why two minutes? Because your muscle needs at least 10 to 20 seconds to release itself, but the tendon and the muscle spindle, which is in your muscle, needs around two minutes to release, to get used to the stretch. Okay? That's what I can recommend for the position when we sit all day. Okay. Any other questions? Rashmi, can you hear? <coughs> yeah. What you can do as well, if you have some issues, let's say you have lower back issues when you are sitting the whole day, I can say, okay, you just stand up and with each phone call, with each phone call, what you have, you get on your phone and then you say, okay, I'm just walking two to three steps backwards. When you work backwards, you use your glute muscle and you release automatically your hip flexor. That you can do as well when you are sitting in the office and, and um, have some muscle pain. Also, some clients are suffering with pain in your chest spine. What you can do for that, you just sit straight, look straight, and you just make a rotation left and right like that. Yeah. My pelvis is not moving. I'm not moving too much. I'm just moving left and right. My head is straight. Otherwise, I'm getting dizzy. With that, you can release immediately pain in your chest spine. Why is it like that? Because we have a muscle which we call erector spine. It's like a stick, bamboo stick, left and right towards to your spine. Yeah. When you feel this back pain all over here, yeah? 
here and it's coming in from your head, then you just make a rotation and the pain will release immediately. Because your erector speed, this muscle actually is constructed like the Eiffel Turm from Paris. Yeah, it's just small muscles. They are coming this way, this way, this way, or just going up and down. And you can't move or release the pain with big exercises. Just make the small rotation and the pain will release immediately. I hope that's a good answer for you. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Nick, now I would like to invite our past national president and founder chairperson, Flo Kolkata, Renuka Shah, to pose the next question. Over to you, Renuka Ji. Good evening, Dr. Babu. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Same here. Now, it's, it's a conventional thought that after one crosses 40, the bones become brittle, especially in women suffering from menopause and hormonal issues. Yeah. Then what is... We are frozen. Anuka, I can't hear you. We are frozen. If we have the question about, uh, because it looks like we are talking about osteoporosis, yeah? yes. which kind of symptoms do we have for osteoporosis? Uh, very honest speaking, usually we don't have any symptoms for osteoporosis, right? It's just a fact that your bones Hello? become weak. Oh, I'm going to back. I'm talking about osteoporosis now, about the symptoms. I hope you are fine with that. I, I think there is some audio issue. I think that's some audio. Just let me continue. Yeah. Uh, the point is, you know, when you are in a young age, your bone is actually recovered and you have a new bone, a complete new bone after seven years. Right. After seven years, you have a new bone. I always bring the example of the femur. The femur is actually the bone in your thigh. It's the biggest bone in our body and the longest bone. Yeah. This whole bone is recovered and a completely new build up after seven years. So that's happening when you are young. But if we are crossing the age or entering the age of 20, 30, 40, and our hormone system is changing, means our body needs a longer time to recover, first of all, yeah, to build up new muscle structures and bone structures as well. I'll give you an example. Your aries, aries is the blood body cell, needs around 135 days for a new one. Okay, so bones need around seven years again when you are young. So females are going to the hormone issues like osteoporosis means you have on your left hand, you can say you have osteoblast and here you have an osteoclast. Okay. So they have to work as a team together. Osteoblast have to build it and osteoclast have to rebuild it. Okay. That's how it works to make a new bone or build up a new bone for a new bone construction. So again, in age with hormone system, it's changing. You need a longer recovery time. For that. The best thing what you can do for that is, um, let's say, exercises like small trampoline. Trampoline, you know, jump up and down, sounds strange, but in a crazy way, just small movements, because your bone structure has, we call it trabeke. Trabeke is the way how I give compression, decompression on my bone, okay? Only with this compression and decompression, I am able to give stability for my bone. I give you another example that you can follow me. If you see a space shuttle and the astronaut is coming down from the space, you will not see any one of these guys is walking. There is someone on the left and on the right to carry these guys because they have high end osteoporosis because in the space, we don't have any gravity, right? They don't have the compression and decompression. That's why you get carried by the guides that they are not breaking any bones. So the best, the solution for that is really working out lifestyle, workout, workout don't mean you have to go in the gym and work out like a bodybuilder, simple exercises, even like yoga, compression, decompression, squats, and so on. Nautic walking is very common in Europe. Yeah, it's like skiing without skis. Yeah, and that makes a lot of difference. Food classes, the right nutrition, Dr. Vicky will talk about it. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference. Lifestyle is the best medicine when you can put. Is this an inevitable thought of aging, Dr. Boyle? 
Sorry? Is this a chemical part of aging? Is osteoporosis an chemical part aging. of aging? It's a process of aging, that's for sure. But also, the, gener the genetic... But we, can, but we can take some actions to prevent bone loss, right? Yeah, we can, we can. But you never can say, I can stop it immediately. It is not possible. There are many factors are touching the trigger point. Like, is it a genetic problem? I know so many clients, I know the grandmother has it, the mother has it, and I know, okay, maybe this generation will have it as well. And I give her some uh, exercises, what she can do Really, This small trampoline jumping up, you can make even group classes, it's fun, right? You can make a big, big prevention for that. And for sure, you have to build a muscle skeleton issue around your bone, because only your muscle skeleton issues, like your thighs, like your um, lower legs, they are supporting your knees. Very important. So, when we're talking about the legs. But on the other hand, you have to see even exercises like yoga, Pilates, amazing, you know, for prevention for osteoporosis. You know, swimming is also very good because we have always a decompression and compression. After that, we can go for a walk. There are so many things that have to be active and we can control. Also, of course, medicine, genetic factors, and a lot of things are coming uh, on the same page. But in the end, Prevention is the uh, uh, movement is the best medicine for osteoporosis. My experience, and I was dealing a lot with females, uh, with osteoporosis. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. You are more than welcome. So the thumb rule is you bend so that you don't break. Now our next question is from our past chairperson Sabina Runtaji. Over to you, Sabina ji. Hello, Dr. Uh, Nick. Uh, Dr. Nick, a very, very simple and a common question. Many times we uh, suddenly suffer from a sudden onset of a neck pain or a back pain or some cramps or maybe just a so, uh, soft tissue injury. So is there any trigger point uh, relief for instant uh, joint and muscle pain? Because we all just used to, uh, you know, just popping pills immediately, a pain reliever. Okay, let me just give you a, a small definition on that as well. What is the trigger point actually? Yeah, a trigger point and tender point, just for understanding, they'll be on the same page. A trigger point is a point which is always, when you touch it, has a reference area. I give you an example. I touch a trigger point, I touch a trigger point on the traps. Yeah, this is related to your face, means here, masseter muscle, temporalis, front bone, or is going behind your eyes. A typical thing when you go for a massage. And they are just doing a massage and they're not doing any stretches this trigger point will come back okay i tell you why in a second can you open it please? so the point is we have also tender points tender point has nothing to do with the tendo with the ligament tender point is a point when i press it here and it has no reference means it's not traveling okay it's not traveling up or down then we have a tender point so the, the therapy out of that is a different story if i'm going for a trigger point then I have to release this trigger point. We call it delete the trigger point. And you have to make certain stretches to open up your muscle fibers. Yeah? I give you an, an example. You have a tissue here. That's your muscle. Okay? You are using energy all the time when you move around. Am I right? You have adenine three phosphate. That's what you need immediately. You have creatine phosphate. You have protein. You have carbs. And you have fat. Okay? So, in the first few seconds, it's already there all the time. It's ATP, adenine three phosphate for the first millisecond. So the point is when we are always using the same function of the muscle and always the same distance, I will talk about it later, then we can build up trigger points. Why? It is like garbage from used energy. So, and this is your muscle and it's coming up like that and this is a trigger point. So that's garbage. Around that is a hole, yeah? And when I press it to open it, it's like, it's opening and histamine, which is an enzyme, is coming there to make this muscle warm. That's why you're red there and you feel warm after a massage. And this trigger point is opening like that. But if I'm not stretching the whole system here, the muscle, this trigger point will come back certain. Make sense? Yeah. So what I'm doing in my own consultations, uh, I am guiding my clients with a cork. I have a wine cork and I guide them with the wine cork on certain points. Yeah. Because a trigger point is not already on, uh, always on the same area. It could be in your case here, in my case, it could be here. Because 
what we call it's a matter trigger point or a satellite trigger point. If we are lucky and I touch one trigger point, all your trigger points will release. Unfortunately, nobody knows where is this trigger point in this case. Nobody knows, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would be busy like crazy only with trigger point therapy. Yeah. So, but you will see a huge difference if you have a good therapist. He says, okay, I'm pressing now this trigger point. Oh, it's mostly here on your traps. And you say, hey, Nick, it's is traveling up in my face. And I know, aha, definition trigger point. I have to delete the trigger point. And after that, I have to go and stretch this muscle, which I just showed you in this way. If you have a therapist, he can even assist you and help you and guide you. So what I'm doing again, I have a cork with my clients because they are my finger. It's almost the same. And I say, okay, we are traveling now on the traps. We find the right trigger point. I show you certain techniques and you can release it. But again, the trap muscle is related to your masseter, to your bite muscle, and to your temporalis as well, and to your eye muscle. So I have to take care about the whole system, otherwise you just have a short release and the pain will come back immediately. That's why a lot of clients say, Nick, I was already for so many sessions, but it's not releasing. It helps for a short period of time, but it's coming back. Why is it like that? Now you know why. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Dr. Nick. Thank you, Dr. Nick. Uh, so in this Thank regard, you. I have one more question. Uh, when should we actually, what is the difference between cold and hot therapy? And when should we apply uh, ice packs and when should we use hot bags? Okay. Uh, quite simple to explain. Think about a scenario, Rashmi, you have fever or your child has fever. Yeah. What are you doing to release it? You adding a hot bag or an ice bag? Cold towels or warm towels? I think cold towels, right? The best to release fever by the way is just put cold towels uh, under your calf or cover the calves for five minutes and then you change it for the whole night and the fever is gone, usually. Yeah. It's an inflammation. It is an inflammation in your body. So if I have a muscle inflammation, I would never, or a joint inflammation, let's say I'm going somewhere and I twisted my ankle. My whole ankle is blue and I have a blue line on my ankle. Yeah. Then I would never ever say, please use a hot bag because this is a sign of an inflammation. So no heat bag for an inflammation. I would use an ice pack better. I'm not a big fan of an ice pack to be very honest with you. I am a big fan of ice cube. Why? An ice cube, I just can slide over the area. Where is the pain? Where is it swollen? If you have an inflammation, it's always warm. It is swollen. And we have a functional ASA means we can move properly. Yeah. And it's red. So we have five symptoms of an inflammation. Yeah. So the point is when you are going with your ice cube there, you can release the pain immediately. And the ice cube is done after two minutes. It's over. So because we know in osteopathy or physiotherapy, if you are applying ice longer than two minutes, you have a paradox uh, reaction means you like to close your bean system that your blood can flow more and more and water can flow more and more. Yeah, it will hold for two minutes. But if you apply a cold pack for more than two minutes, it's open up immediately. The double size, we call it lumen, is open up. That's a paradox uh, reaction in your bean system. That's why two minutes max with the ice cube, you're on the safe side. Do it for five to seven times in a day and everything works perfectly fine. First of all, Heat bag you can use if you see, ah, again to the traps. I have some trap muscle issues. I was now for a therapy with my osteopath or therapist, and I just have this muscle soreness. Then I can apply a heat bag. Anything that was pain and it's really stiff, you always can apply a heat bag to make a huge difference. Or the other scenario, you apply a cold bag longer than two minutes. I'm a big fan of a cold bag for, let's say, four minutes. Then my whole system is open, and then I apply a heat bag. There's an amazing result. What we are doing, actually, on the national team, because we don't have time for the recovery of the guys, right? They have to be immediately on the field again. So there are some tricks what you can do. So, so I and, that's absolutely great to know. We hope our viewers are taking notes of all these healing and therapeutic solutions. Uh, if they have missed on any points, they can anytime revisit the link to understand the points better. Now, yeah. going to the if next question. Always ask me, it's fine. Yeah. 
many of us or our family members are troubled by more uh, very common lifestyle ailments like migraine or headache frozen shoulder spondylitis slip disc sciatic pain and we observe many of our senior family members are having lower back pain or arthritis pain so can you please help us how to fix these kind of conditions know their symptoms and get on the road to recovery okay just give me a short overview um migraine what is migraine i always like to give a definition if you are understanding what we are talking about okay very important a typical migraine is um when you are suffering with a lot of headache eye pain you can't see any or you can't handle any noise any light and you like to cover actually in the darkness and nobody likes to talk and you are warming up that's a typical migraine okay mostly of us we don't have a migraine mostly we have a very bad headache with eye pain because your muscles are just overused think about it how often are you sitting on the laptop how often you are sitting on the tv how often you are sitting on your phone it's overused that's mostly the sign of migraine or of this bad headache which is somehow like a migraine okay so um the best is really avoid sometimes taking the advices like laptop like phone i have one day in the day and we when i say i don't use my phone at all it's a sunday that's nick day i see okay there is nothing only really family time when i chat with my germans at home and that's it because we need to recover we need to recover otherwise our body is just overused with all the blue light and everything yeah so that's a typical migraine migraine we can help you a lot as well with osteopathy because i can make a pain release for your eyes for your ears because even your ears are related to this whole fascia here here this looks very silly when i'm doing that but here all the therapists which i know from now they are only taking care about your back side but the front side nobody takes care about it mostly unfortunately you know but as a system is a balance i have to work on both sides and have a pain release so on the other hand you can say a lot of migraines the real migraines are happening after giving birth you deliver the baby your posture in your pelvis is changing i like to explain to you i have to speak a bit louder i hope you can understand me um i am now a t-bone look i am now a t-bone okay you can see the t-bone and the t-bone is like a triangle actually okay that's a triangle that's a t-bone when uh, normal that's the position of a t-bone what we call neutral position okay when i go now in the neutral position and i'm giving birth or before even nine months of pregnancy my t-bone goes in this position right so now I'm completely out of the normal form we are going in this position after giving birth we are ending up in this position so and a lot of young ladies have a lot of headache migraine because the t-bone after giving birth is still in this position or in this position right when you think about your pelvis your pelvis actually formed like that and in the middle you have a t-bone right when you're giving birth you give a compression on the basement of the t-bone what we call s1 or s2 because sacrum means s1 2 3 4 5 and a lot of ladies are suffering with migraine because the compression of your pelvis is still there on the t-bone still stands in the inclination means in this position and why are you having headache now or why are you having migraine now i can explain because we have a system which is comes from here from your um scarf right what we call for ramen magnum and this system is called dura mater and the dura mater is actually your outside brain skin we have three brain skins we have the uh, pira mater dura mater and arachnoidea okay and the dura mater is actually the skin which covers your whole nerve system so and from your neck until s2 means bone number two on your t-bone there is the system fixed this dura mater is fixed now you can imagine when i'm standing like that and something is pulling here all the time can you see that and it's always under stress you are suffering with my makes sense right so you can come to an osteopath we can fix it very good yeah on the other hand you can say uh the other hand you can say you have um 
Mike, after you have a uterus section, okay, to remove the uterus, your uterus is fixed on your lower spine with ligaments. So when you remove it, your whole system slides down and you have more pressure on your sacrum, on your T-bone and so on. That's why we have a lot of pain as well. Also a sense of for osteopathy. Okay, we can fix all that, no worries. So what else you asked me about? Now I had my green, what else we had? When I'm talking universities, so you have to stop here. <laughs> frozen shoulder, to be honest with you guys, frozen shoulder is uh, I think what I don't like to say, this term I don't like to use at all. I know in India, uh, a lot of people are suffering with the, with the um, symptom of a frozen shoulder. Actually, it's not right to use this term at all. A frozen shoulder means the shoulder is frozen. I can't move at all. That's a frozen shoulder, okay? So the term is actually wrong to use, what they are doing, unfortunately, in India. What most of the clients have is an impeachment syndrome. means... I can move my shoulder 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, and something between or 90 degree, let's say 120 degree. In this area, I have my pain. That's mostly of my clients are suffering with that kind of pain. I don't know anyone, even in Germany, who can't move the shoulder after not even having an accident or uh, paralympics, right? So mostly can move here and here, and nobody's able to say, oh, I have a frozen shoulder now, because it's an impeachment syndrome. And the impeachment syndrome means there is some compression. A compression on your nerve or on your uh, borsa, you know, and mostly it's related to your supraspinatus, means to your rotator cuff, and that's why because we are always ending up in this position. We are not using the outer rotation, means there's a muscle disbalance, and that's why we are suffering with frozen shoulder or impeachment. Also, that is quite easy to fix. No worries about that. It's easy. I have you can see when I have ten clients. Clients, six clients are suffering with a frozen shoulder. It's quite simple to fix. Because your traps, your delta, and this muscle here, what we call a scalene muscle, they are related to each other. Can you imagine when I'm always going in this position, I always give a compression here. It's like I'm standing with my foot on the water pipe. Water can flow, right? It's the same here. When I'm here giving a compression, means my nerve system, my vein system blocked. How I can move it, right? So, means right. therapy and activity. Activity is the best medicine what I can give to you. Okay, that was frozen shoulder. What else we had? We had, um, let's say, slip disc, yeah? You talk about yeah. slip disc? Okay, slip disc is mostly between L4 and L5. Okay, L4, L5 means lower back, L4 and L5. So, and between L5 and again S1, T-bone, sac bone, okay? Mostly there we have a lot of issues. And when we talk about the previous question, osteoporosis is a typical sign for that because your spine becomes more compression because your bone structure is becoming weak, yeah? And to become even smaller when we are aging, that's normal, yeah? Because your disc even, what we call the water in your disc, yeah? This liquid in your disc, it's becoming less, 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 and then we have the compression on the bone. And that's why we are suffering a lot of the pain. So that's actually um, a sliding disc, and the sliding disc is touching your nerve. So a lot of clients are coming with the same question and say, Nick, do I have a sliding disc or what is it? Very be honest with you, a sliding disc, you can make a quite simple example for you to understand. Do I have it or I don't have it? First of all, you are going to a doctor, who does not only an X-ray with you, you need an MRI for that. Because an X-ray shows you bone structure. An MRI shows you the structure of your disc, of your nerve, everything what is soft. We say, what I can touch and it's soft, I can, I can soft. I can soft. Oh, okay. Oops, that's actually Someone is, can you please unmute? Can you please unmute? There were some Wi-Fi issues, I suppose. Can you just uh, repeat your last sentence? Oh, I forgot my last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so my last sentence was about, 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 about tests. tests. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I hear my voice. I hear my, my voice on my own. Is this okay? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm no, not, I'm not, I'm not. Oh no. 
Can you hear me, Rashmi? Yes, very well. Yes, Rashmi, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, now the echo is gone. Okay, I show you this very important really to understand do I have an X ray, uh, do I have a slip disk, or I don't have what I call safety tests. Okay, the first test what I have to do is I have to cut. <coughs> if I have a sharp pain in my lower spine, the sign is positive, we make a done in my box. Okay, the next one is what I call a salva commando, it's like you are going for scuba diving. You give a pressure over your ears, you have pain in your lower spine, the sign is positive, could be also a sliding disc L4, L5, S1. The next one is when you stand, Ali, I need your help now, please. Yeah. <clears throat> My assistant is here. When I stand in this position and I give a compression again, I give a compression in my heel bones and I have a back pain, then it's a sign positive, mostly also a slipping disc. Yeah? The next one I can show you, just let me go around, I have even a mat here. So I'm not able to move my foot in this way or in this way. Yeah, I can move in this way or in this way. Means I'm not able to do it because I have some weakness in my muscles. It's mostly also a disc issue. The other case is I have the pain all over here till my thighs to my knee hole and it's going to my calf. Mostly it's not a slight disc, mostly it's what we call uh, pyriformis syndrome because your muscle here is overused as well, your T bone is not in the right position. Yeah, but to make really a good diagnosis, you should see a doctor for an MRI or an X ray. Yeah, again, it's really important for me to give you this message, guys, to say, okay, I have <coughs> cuffing, I have the Masalva Conado, or even when I'm using the toilet and I feel pain, then I should say, okay, we should. Uh, we should uh, go for an MRI, yeah? I feel some weakness, means I can't move my foot up in this position, or I can't go on my toes. It's mostly a sign, it's mostly a sign for, uh, it's mostly the sign for, <laughs> it's mostly a sign for a um, slip disc, yeah? That's how it is. And you have also a slip disc uh, between C3, C4, C5, means C is what we call cervical spine, neck spine. If you have this kind of issue, really bad pain, and you are not able to move your hands, you don't feel your fingers and so on, then you should see a doctor for an MI. Sure. Okay. Any other questions to it? Can you hear me now? The echo is gone. Very good. Yes. So, what was the other one? Psychiatric pain and arthritis pain. Uh, Scardica pain is exactly what I just explained. Is the muscle or the area? I showed you again. This. When it goes all the way down, means mostly your pyriformis, your glute muscle, is under compression and gives you a compression on your nerve. This is sclerotica nerve, okay? So, and the sclerotica nerve is going all the way down, all your hamstrings goes to your foot as well. And if you want to be sure, is it a sliding disc or is it sclerotica pin, you just go and have an MRI, please, or you just do the tests which I just showed you. There is never a warranty. The best warranty is to go for an MRI to understand what I, what I have. Okay? So, arthritis. Arthritis is also very important. We have, let's say, the bone is here. Okay? Ali, we have a skeleton. Where is it? Uh, I showed you on the skeleton. Yeah? Is there any leg? Yes. I have here a skeleton for the... I'll try this thing because it's coming in most of this question. So you can see that's now your hip. Okay, I showed you from the front. So, and your distance between your femur, this bone, and your pelvis is big enough because it's matching here with your, with your hip. So, and when this bone comes too close to each other, the area means like that, that means your cartilage, which supports your joint, is shrinking. And in this cartilage, you have a liquid, what we call synovialis, okay? Is this shrinking and you don't have any liquid to give you nutrition for your bone and your joint, then you have arthrosa, okay? Arthrosa, you can't stop. It's a process as well about hormones, about inactivity, and so on. But arthritis is actually the inflammation out of that. Anyone of you who will say, I have arthritis, will say, Nick, I have periods, I don't have any pain, I have periods, I have a lot of pain, right? 
this is actually the arthritis. Arthritis is again what I said. Anything what's ending with itis is an inflammation. Bronchitis, arthritis, always an inflammation. Okay. What you can do for that? Cold back and activity. Yeah. And the best prevention, if you like, uh, like to prevent arthrosis, please, please uh, uh, be active. And very good is water therapy, aqua therapy. Thank you, Dr. Nick. That was a great insight into pain management. Now, my next question is related to sports therapy. When we walk, jog, sprint at times to functional training, uh, we get it's very common to have knee injury. And most many of our viewers are also right now posting a lot many questions related to knee injury and pain in the heel. So, how can we strengthen our knees and counter the same? And while hitting the ground while walking, should we walk toe to heel or heel to toe? You know, that's actually what we call this deaf child in medicine. Exactly this question. So there are so many studies outside from Germany, from the US. What's the right way to walk? Yeah. The right way is actually when you are coming over your heel bone, roll forward and is there any foot? No, there's no foot, but I can show you. Okay. You're coming over your heel bone, you touch the floor and you're going up over your toes. That's the right way for the compression. Yeah. The other way you should uh, see it from the other view. What's the best prevention for that? You know, first of all, which way we are running. Okay, running, people always say I'm running on my toes, I'm running flat, or I'm running on my heels. The best way to run is because your foot is formed like that, is when you are going to the middle, right? Because it can bounce. That's why our foot construction is like that and not flat. The problem in India is what I realized here Mostly of my clients, don't get wrong, have flat feet. Flat feet because they are wearing the wrong shoes, flip flops, open shoes, sandals, and so on and so forth. We don't have that common in Germany like that because we are not wearing any flip flops, mostly because most of the cold, right? Very honest to you. Yeah. Uh, but footwear is very important. And then you have to understand if you are going for a sole, because mostly our clients are going for a sole, yeah. It makes no sense for me at all. A sole only makes sense when I understand why I have this pain, what is the position of my bone structure in my foot skeleton. I have to fix this issue, and then I can say, okay, now I protect you with the bone, uh, the, with the sole. Why? If you have a short and a long leg, what we call short and long leg, yeah, and now you are going to a doctor to say, okay, you are too short here, we just bring it up in this way that you are in the same position, it makes a big difference for your pelvis because your pelvis moves up as well uh, in the same position, right? You have to change the position of your pelvis, of your whole bone structure and your whole muscle skeleton system. Then I can give you salts to say, now we make a prevention for that. Otherwise, you make it worse and worse and worse and worse. It starts then with pain, it starts with lower back pain, and it's even going to your neck spine. I tell you why. Look. Nobody, even when they have scoliosis, oh, this tree has to go a bit backwards. With scoliosis, nobody will stand in this way and look down, right? They always will end up in this position because we need this parallel view between crown and eyes for orientation, for stability, okay? And they are coming in this position. So maybe you have now a short and a long leg. I show it like that. This is now short. And I have a sole under my right foot, makes no sense. You can see how much my pelvis changed. Look, it's a big difference. It's even now going diagonal. So that's why I say, please fix the reason why we have this kind of pain, and then we can go for soles. Okay. So, and how can you make your legs stronger? It's just exercises, 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 exercises. Yeah. Water therapy. Walking, even walk down. There are so many exercises what you can do with your own body weight. It's amazing. I don't need to go to the gym because of lockdown, we can't go. So you can even use a towel. I can you show you so many exercises only with a towel what you can do for stability. If you are walking in the house, bar feet. Best example. All the people, they say, okay, I have cold feet or whatever. Just wear socks with their only sliding protection. It makes a lot of difference. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Any Nick. Really engaging. 
and I'm sure it will change the trajectory of our lives for better. Now, moving to I the hope. next part of the session, we've got so many questions mm -hmm. uh, from our viewers, which we'll be taking after uh, uh, the next speaker's presentation. So now I would like to invite Sunira Ji to welcome our next speaker for the evening. Thank you, Dr. Bauer. That was very interesting. And uh, now we move on to the next section. Strong bones are crucial to good health. And good nutrition is crucial to strong bones. Finding out what you need to protect the health of your skeleton will help you make healthier food choices every day. To tell you all about this, we have with us Dr. Dipti Tejas, a holistic living guide and the head of nutrition at Reset by New Kanti Honi. Dr. Dipti is a doctorate in naturopathy, a postgraduate in nutrition, and has a degree in microbiology as well. She has helped many people bring out lifestyle changes for an enhanced and healthier life. Good evening and welcome to Flow, Dr. Deepthi. We are grateful you made the time to be with us here today. I request... Yes, please go I request you to address all of us and guide us about the nutrition for bone health. Sure, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and I'm super excited to share with you all how uh, nutrition can help you all you know, improve your bone health and make a bone stronger. I'm sure by now you all must have got a lot of information about stretching and about exercise that uh, Dr. Dick has shared with all of us. So I will be adding, uh, you know, uh, I will be adding basically the functions of functions of bone and uh, obviously the nutrition that is required by your bone and uh, then factors affecting the health of the bone. Now, uh, we see, uh, you know, all of us uh, see, you know, uh, ourselves in mirror every day, you know, just to check aesthetically how we, how we look. If we see a few strands of hair falling on the pillow, okay, that makes it so anxious and rich out almost all the, uh, you know, uh, hair products, you know, that can help us uh, address these issues. This issues. Similarly, if we get skin breakouts, we uh, basically uh, reach out to our doctors and their dads to get in uh, information on, uh, you know, how to get over uh, the, you know, the breakouts, etc. But how many of us actually see within what's happening inside the body? Okay, and let me tell you, bone health is uh, such a topic that is very, very neglected. So today, I'm going to be explaining it to you all. Uh, what are the importance of different nutrients and, you know, uh, what are the different herbs that you can use, you know, to uh, make it into your bone health. Bone plays a lot of important functions, right from being protective uh, in nature, for example, your rib cage, the chest, the, the chest, uh, you know, the bones that are there in the chest muscles. So basically what happens is they protect your heart and they protect your lungs. Similarly, bones also have a, a basic support function so the spine that you the spine that you uh, you know call it as a backbone it is called backbone the reason being it is supporting the entire body okay the third thing is it has a, a you know muscle uh, attaching function you know it attaches the the skeletal muscles are attached to your bones and that that what makes your movement better okay similarly the most important function, one of the most important functions of bones is to store the calcium. Okay, so when your body does not meet up to the uh, dietary requirement of calcium, your body reaches out to bones because 99% of your calcium is deposited in your bones. Yeah, also we need to understand there are some predisposed factors that affect your bone health. Okay. The most important one that I feel uh, affects your bone health in long run is basically the diet. Okay, um, each one of us uh, must have gone on some diet or the other. Okay, uh, most of us want to lose weight to look thinner for some occasion, for some event coming up, or maybe you know uh, want a beach uh, body, you know, because we are taking up a vacation, uh, you know, in future or so, you know, and and so on. So basically what happens when you go on such crash diets, the results are definitely very short lived. Okay. Also, these crash diets do not take into account the micro and the macronutrients. Okay. And what's suffered basically in long run is the 
bone. Okay, obviously muscles and various other parts. Yeah. So since we are talking about the bones, so I would say uh, they, these fat diets are generally deprived in uh, calcium and other other important minerals. The next important factor that decides the health of the bone is your age. Okay, your peak bone mass is basically achieved in mid thirties. Okay, so how your bone density is going to be in later years is decided much, much, much in advance. Okay, so ensure that you start taking care of taking care of yourself and your bone much at a uh, starting age. The next is the gender. We all know that females have more likely chances of having weaker bones or bone issues in comparison to males. The next factor is hormones. Now, hormones plays a very, very important role when it comes to bone health. Okay, so estrogen, which is one of the most important hormone in females, which is also found in minute or little quantities in males. Okay, this plays a very important role to protect the bone from, you know, the bone loss or mineral loss. Okay, so this also answers basically why do women at menopausal age have more bone issues because your estrogen falls. Similarly, for males, the testosterone is basically a protective hormone. Okay, so if you have low testosterone or low estrogen, your bone density will be at stake. Okay, the, the next factor that determines the bone health is the medication that you are on. So what happens is, whenever we fall sick, we reach out to some medications or the other. Okay, because our life has become so fast and we just want to be all right very soon. Okay without understanding how these medications can affect our, uh, you know, internal organs, can affect our bone health in the long run. So medications like antacids, steroids, antidepressants, and even anti-seizure medicines in the long run can affect your bone. Okay, now since we know the functions and we know the factors affecting it, let us understand the top three nutrients that are absolutely important for your bone. The first one, undoubtedly, is calcium. So since your bones are made up of calcium, it is very important for you to take care of this mineral. Okay? Most of the commercials, the TV commercials that you see of supplements, uh, you know, featuring the calcium, they always say that if you cross 30, let's get on to supplements. I'm not against supplements. It's just that I would always uh, recommend you to look at the uh, balanced diet first. Look at these, like look at the food sources first before you jump onto the supplement. Now, what happens is uh, if calcium is lacking in your diet, obviously the bones have to leach out the calcium to compensate for it. Now, what happens? We need to understand there are a lot of good sources, food sources of calcium. All you need to do is incorporate them at a, a, a in, in regularly. A, um, as in regularly in your day and also in adequate quantity. So some of these uh, sources are, uh, if I have to say milk and milk products like yogurt, cheese, milk, they're good sources. Then we have green leafy vegetables, which are very good sources. We have certain nuts like almonds, which are good sources, which is a good source. Then we have seeds like sesame seeds, that is silk. We have chia seeds. And we have poppy seeds, which are a good source of calcium. We also have bony, uh, bony fish like sardines and salmon and all. They are excellent for it. So if you're a vegetarian, choose the vegetarian options. If you're a non-vegetarian, you may mix them up. Coming to the next mineral, which is very important when it comes to bone health, is the magnesium. Magnesium is required for calcium and vitamin D regulation in the body. Okay, magnesium, is, magnesium plays more than 300 biological functions in the body. They are required for biological processes in the body. So you can imagine how important this mineral is. Okay, so all you need to do is just, just try and include food which are good sources of magnesium. Again, green leafy vegetables, nuts, seeds, and also avocado is an excellent source of magnesium. The third important nutrient Okay, that we cannot, uh, you know, that that is that requires the mention is basically vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. Most of the time, we, we are seeing, you know, the research is also proves that people uh, in today's generation are getting more health, more bone issues than than earlier. The reason is their exposure to vitamin D. Vitamin D basically 
is important for calcium absorption in intestine. So if you are deprived, if you have deficiency of vitamin D, your bones will be weaker. All you need to do is, is go out in sunshine and just take up a brief amount of sunlight, maybe early morning or late evening, and, and you'll be meeting up your requirement. If the deficiency is too much, then obviously you need to look for supplementation as well. So now you know the nutrients that are required for bone health. So now let us understand how these nutrients are basically required to be absorbed. Absorption is very, very important. It's not about just uh, allowing your body to get the nutrients, but it is also the absorption that is very important. Now, for absorption, what we need to do is we need to understand there are a few anti-nutritional factors which are naturally found in food. I'll give you the first example is phytic acid, which is found in whole grains, pulses, etc. And oxalic acid, which is found in green leafy vegetables and many other things. Okay, these both basically bind into calcium and they do not allow it to be absorbed. So now what do you do? All you need to do is change the way you cook. Okay, so maybe for green leafy vegetables, you can blanch them and you can use them. So oxalic acid goes out. For phytic acid, try and sprout your pulp. Try and ferment your food. Fermentation is like the idli dosas and all. So you mix rice and dal. That fermentation will remove the effect of phytic acid and it will allow your body to use the calcium and other minerals more, more faster. The next factor that affects the absorption is caffeine. We all love the smell of coffee. It, it basically wakes up, wakes us up. Okay, it is like a kick start to the day. But when you take coffee along with a main meal, like a breakfast, okay, what happens is coffee being, caffeine being a mild diuretic, what it does is basically it uh, it, it flushes off the calcium before it gets absorbed. So you, you just tend to feel, uh, you know, uh, urination and then the calcium goes out and that's how the body is going to absorb it even if your food has it. So just allow your food to be in your system for around 15-20 minutes before you reach up your cup of coffee. The third important factor is basically your gut health. Okay, we cannot ignore this fact that how much of a good food you eat if your gut health is weak or if your gut is weak, the small intestine is weak where all the food absorption takes place. No amount of minerals, vitamins, or any food will get absorbed and will be put to work. So ensure that you look for those signs, okay, uh, for gut gut health, and then uh, accordingly add add the required nutrients and the minerals. For gut health, prebiotics and probiotics are the best food. Uh, as I said, fermented food is excellent source of probiotics. Okay, so just try and incorporate it so that the other minerals and vitamins through the day can be absorbed. Now, uh, what we need to understand at the end of this session is um, basically what are the things that are detrimental to your bone health. So, to begin with, uh, the first thing that is very, very uh, important that we all need to understand, and I think Dr. Nick has given us so much insight about it, is the exercise. Okay, if you're sedentary, there will be uh, you know, there will be more bone loss than, than anything else. The reason is just like muscles needs training exercise to become stronger, the bones also require the same. Your bones, just like any other tissue in the body, they also undergo repair, rejuvenation and rebuilding. Yeah, so just try and understand that exercise is very, very important. What kind of exercise is important to improve the bone here? It's basically the uh, weight bearing exercise. Where you you bear your own body weight or you take an external weight like weight lifting and weight, weight training and such. So ensure that you do this. There's another important benefit of exercise when it comes to bone health. That is exercise basically improves your posture, improves your gait and improves your coordination. So the risk of fall is minimal. So if you ask me, I would say exercise is required for all the age groups. Okay, it is not meant for only an age-specific people or age-specific gender. No, it is required for each one of us. The next important uh, factor that I would say uh, we need to consider and that would be detrimental is not followed is processed food. 
we all know the side effects or bad effects of eating processed or junk food okay but let me tell you these packaged processed foods okay do not have any nutrition all right because the processing generally rips off all the uh, you know it, it basically rips off all the minerals and vitamins from the the basic ingredient from which the processed food has been made and that's where you know uh, the whole problem starts uh, you are just adding empty calories without any nutrition and the salt and sugar that goes inside the processed food is so much uh, you know just to lift up the taste and flavor etc etc and all the preservatives that are used in processed foods are also salt in it they are salt bound now when when i am talking about salt i am talking about the sodium in particular okay we have found that uh, just one gram increase in sodium each day can lead to 1% of food loss per day okay so if you want to protect your bones just try and uh, you know work on the intake of salt that goes inside your body through the day okay also the third and the last thing that uh, i would like to uh, explain to you all which is detrimental to your bone health we all read the statutory warning which is written on the packet of cigarettes okay but yet we know there is no harm however how it affects the bone health is what we need to understand so in long run smoking affects bone health in two ways the first one it basically uh, uh, produces a lot of free radicals free radicals uh, are like those bullet shot lines okay and they start affecting the cells of the bone and they start making it weaker day by day the next thing that a smoking a prolonged smoking does is it it basically uh, uh, produces stress hormones in the body stress hormones like cortisol when cortisol is inside your body it impedes the production of another hormone called calcitonin so calcitonin is a protective hormone it protects the bone from breaking down okay so if you're smoking uh, and if you do not take care of it then what happens is the calcitonin levels drop and that's where the bone breakage happens now to conclude my session i would like to tell you that if you if you use the power of food okay to empower the uh, the healing capacity the natural healing capacity of the body okay to live a pain free life so that's all from my end we can open for questions thank you thank you so much dr deepthi this was actually a thorough insight on how physical therapy works best with good nutrition now we have so many questions in the comment box and it's like flooded with health related queries from the viewers so we will go one by one with questions so the first question is from rashi agarwal please suggest a remedy to get rid of unexplained pain in one side of the body the hand the leg and back dr nick this question is for you dr nick uh, i Are you able to hear Come me? In. Now I hear you. Come again. Very heavy, please. Yeah. So Rashi Agarwal has posed a question. Please suggest a remedy to get rid of unexplained pain in one side of the body, the hand, the leg, and back. If you have, has some pain in one side of the body. <clears throat> pain in one side of the body, like one hand, like one hand. Mm, okay. I have to understand more about it. Is it coming from your neck? Is it starting from your head? Where is it starting from? You know. So only yeah. one side of the side. Uh, yeah. Ask me the question, please, on my on my Instagram handle because it's more detailed. Sure. So the next question is from Anjali Saraugi. What is optimal uh, PTH value to sustain optimal bone health for perimenopausal women? So what is that? Dr. Dr. Dipi, I give it to you. It's better for you to answer that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, see, every diagnostic has got a different levels, you know. So, uh, anything uh, that you feel your diagnostic, let's say you go to a X diagnostic, they will have a reference range. Okay. So, you just need to correlate not only the PTH but also the calcium levels and also the vitamin D and many other factors. 
okay so it won't be right to tell you that you know this level you need to maintain because if you don't maintain the levels then it would be a stress for you and you would uh, you know you would uh, basically affect your body more so whenever you do the test ensure that you do a series of tests you know to determine your bone health like bmd is uh, is is very good you can do pth you can do uh, you know thyroid you can do your calcium serum calcium uh, you can do your vitamin d levels you can do your b12 levels so basically the entire panel gives us a right information okay uh, i could not say there is any specific range as such that we need to look at because every diagnostic uses a different thank you dr deepthi the next question is from miran modi a uh, uh, child is suffering from heel pain uh, he is also an athlete and uh, wants to know what is the cure and prevention this is for dr nick the heel bone spar could be a problem for that when you have a heel bone spar and the athlete is usually doing mostly the same exercises yeah um, a heel bone spar is like you have here your heel bone okay and over a short muscle system your calves are too short your hamstrings are too short you're putting out a certain area of your bone what we call heel bone spar and with each compression you make it bigger and bigger and bigger means just go for ultrasound to release it yeah or for a shock wave to release it. And very important is also stretches on your plantar fascia is like what is under your foot is fascia, okay? The, the front side, the back side of your foot, yeah? Stretch your hamstring and calves and your tendocalcani. Don't go for any cortisone injections. I highly don't recommend it at all, cortisone injections for any problems like that. Otherwise, you will break and cut your aridis tendo one day. Very important. Yeah, just use a tennis ball, roll it out like that, or a golf ball. Even I recommend actually a golf ball for that. Roll it out, do stretches on your hamstrings and on your calves, each of them two minutes, and it will release. Definitely. Okay. And ultrasound, very good for that. Inflammation prevention, even with, um, uh, how is it called? Bromelain. Bromelain is a pineapple enzyme. I also recommend it in a very high doses, always to my clients, because that releases the pain immediately as well. Yeah. And the inflammation as well, but immediately after you have this kind of pain, okay? Bromelain, sure. I suppose, is a pineapple enzyme. Okay, good. What else? The next question is from Divya Kotar. Which exercises are good for knee pain? I have to understand where is the knee pain coming from. Your knee is built up with six joints. It's not only one joint. It's the most complex joint in our body. It's built up with six different uh, sub joints. Yeah. Um, a good one is um, the balance between your thighs and your hamstrings. Yeah, a good exercise I can show you even on the chair. Yeah, it's like you can see me, right? I move my right leg up now and I just extend like I'm kicking a ball. I show you the other side, extend and kick in the ball. With that one, I build up a very nice thigh muscle. Don't bend it like that. Just in the last motion of your joint. Okay. Very good. Also very good for knee pain is squats. Don't go deeper than 90 degrees. Squats, what we call closed exercises. All closed exercises like bench press, squats, kind of uh, lunges are very good for that. And I highly recommend aqua therapy for knee issues. Aqua therapy because you only have 10% of your body weight when you're in water, then you have the compression of the, what we call hydroesthetic pressure because yeah, when I go with 81 kilos in water, I have one, uh, 81 kilos on my body as a pressure as well. It's kind of lymphatic drainage as well. Helps a lot. Okay. And if you have knee pain, you just... Ani, I need you now. Wait, my assistant is helping me. Go for that. Knee pain, you just sit somewhere and you just swing your legs like that. This releases immediately knee pain. Okay. Activity releases knee pain. Good. Next question. That was a very useful tip. Uh, the next question is related to technique pain. So, Piti Kotan, she has been into long writing hours and she has pain in her back and neck. So, please advise. Activity as well. Think about it. You are sitting the whole day and you are writing. I don't know what you are writing on your laptop, on your book. You're always using the same position. Stand up and be active. Stand up, put an alarm there. I'm doing that with my clients all the time. I say, use an alarm for that. After one hour, you stand up because when we are working, we forget about the times, right? So stand up, do a stretch like that, what I showed you, or 
move your arms down and just pull your arms back like that. It's like you are going for rowing, okay? Face your hands, face your hands, and make the rowing position, okay? It's for your neck pain. Lower back pain, just walk at three, four steps backwards, or say I do a kind of glutes training. I just stand, support on a chair, and I just do this kind of exercises 10 times each side, it release immediately um, the stiff muscles, okay? So next question is uh, from Amrita Agarwal. What do you suggest for extremely dominant quads? In most exercises, my glutes don't fire and my quads are dominant. Quads are dominant. So glutes fire, when you like to have a glutes fire, the best exercise is what you can do even, I'll show you. Oh, ladies, now you really give me a challenge. <laughs> okay, a good exercise, you don't need a gym even for that. I'm going on my mat, I need you. I'm going on my mat. Can you see my glutes? Yeah. So I can say I move now. Is it single leg? Yeah. Both legs. You have only my glutes. I have to bend my knee and I move it up like that. To maybe make it very difficult, I just go with both. Up. It's the best glute exercise what you can do for your glutes. The problem is, <coughs> sorry, if you have some lower back pain, don't do it as a Exercise with both legs do it as a single exercise, and your glutes will fire. Next one is bridging, the normal bridging, right? Bridging, I think everybody knows. I'm just lying down and I'm going up. I can see, okay, I'm going up and down just like that. But what we found out in Germany with certain tests for your muscle system is really this one you are lying on your stomach, you are doing a single leg extension, bend your knees, the best exercise for your glutes. Oh my god, can you make me sweaty now? question from Anjali Sarawi. What vitamin D level do you recommend for 46 years female who is an endurance athlete? Let's okay, okay, so Anjali, yeah, so Anjali, uh, I would uh, recommend anywhere between 60 to uh, 70, you know, uh, levels uh, of vitamin D to be on a safer side. Uh, safer side uh, the reason is vitamin d plays a lot of important roles in the body right from your bone health to obviously immunity to your hormone balance and things like that so it is always ideal to maintain a little uh, upper limit i would not say go up to 100 but at least maintaining a 65 70 levels is uh, good thank you dr bc also madhulika sarawi she's saying that she's suffering from frozen shoulders for the uh, last three months she's been suffering and there has been no relief despite video. So should she take injection now? This is for Dr. Nick. Never ever I would recommend any uh, injection right now because it's again cortisol, right? Cortisol will change your whole joint system to sugar, right? Let me just explain it like that. It will be a sugar molecule in the end and you can cut ligaments like your biceps ligament, your supraspinata, infraspinata, everything was related to your shoulder. Mostly the pain is coming from here, right? It's like supraspinata, infraspinata, this rotator cuff, yeah? A very good exercise for that is work on your rotator cuff, outer rotation like that, with the dumbbell, with a water bottle, or on the latissimus pole, and work on your uh, latissimus muscle, because this is the muscle which brings your joint from Let's say this position back in this position. Yeah, mostly it's not a frozen shoulder, what I said already. Mostly it's an impeachment syndrome. We have to understand which kind of impeachment is it, right? We have different kind of levels of impeachment. Depends what is the painful arc saying. Is it 30 degrees, 60, 90, or 120 degrees? Is it between that and you don't have a frozen shoulder? It's called impeachment syndrome. And you don't need any injection for that, just the right exercises. Work on your rotator cuff. Work on the latissimus dorsi on this big muscle here, yeah, and the pain will release. It needs a bit of time, and you have to release your chest muscle, chest muscle traps, and front shoulder. If you are going for a physiotherapist who is doing with you exercises for your shoulder, then please change your physiotherapist. To be very honest with you, because it makes it worse, right? I have to work on the muscle which holds my bone backwards and not move my back, uh, my my arm up. Okay, why is very important question. That's why I'm staying there. You have. Here's your humerus, you are moving up, you need a muscle who rolls the bone up and you need a muscle to slide the bone down that you understand when you are moving, okay? 
If you are working now on your shoulder, you only touch always the roof of your shoulder and makes it worse, the inflammation is getting worse. Okay. okay. Let's work on what we call slider muscle to put it down. It's this muscle and your rotator cuff. Done. So our viewers are constantly posting questions, both related to physiotherapy as well as nutrition, but we are running a little out of time to so we'll take this last question for the evening. Uh, Mridula Jain, she's saying that can the tear in rotator cuff be cured without surgery in a person at the age of 74 years? How to handle the pain? It is very, uh, very uh, crazy to fix without surgery. Uh, endoscopy would be helpful to be like that. But if you can handle the pain with 74, I would not send my grandmother to any surgeon, to be very honest with you in this age. What I recommend, I said, what we call swinging. You just stand. Okay, I show it on my right arm, okay? So, you don't have anything in your hand. Your hand is free and you just swing it. It's even good for the frozen shoulder, what you call frozen shoulder, yeah? Because now you give a gap between your shoulder and your humerus. You open the gap and rotator cuff and humerus and the tears they are free now and you can move around is immediately pain release very very important okay and we have to understand where is this tear is the tear in the front of your shoulder then we have to fix it to bring your center of your humerus backwards and the tears have more place so i don't recommend surgeries in this case depends how big is this tear very important okay thank you Good. so much that was Good. an amazing session and uh, now I would like to invite uh, Manjiri Agarwal to come for the vote of thanks. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank you, Dr. Bauer, Dr. Dipti. Um, honestly, I feel I'm, I'm eating time into members because they have so many questions and the questions are not ending. But unfortunately, we have to end the session. So I'd like to take this opportunity to present a vote of thanks. Pain. It's a very simple four-letter word, but leads to maximum complications in our lives, physically and mentally. Many thanks, Dr. Nick Bao and Dr. Dipti Tejas, for enlightening us with your knowledge on how to handle pain, deal with pain, avoid pain, and cure pain. And with the correct posture, with a great diet and good nutrition, lifestyle is one of the best medicines to help us deal with pain and avoid pain in the future. I'd like to take this opportunity to also thank our lead sponsors, Damodar, Ropeways, Infra Limited, our media sponsors, Sunmark, our gift sponsors, Sprint Factor, Technology Partners, Ideation Technology Solutions, and our very own Manjuri Alman and Rashmi Dabriwal for their hard work for putting this amazing event together and making sure that everything works smoothly. Our past presidents, past chairpersons, for their support and guidance always, and our members for their encouragement and for coming here and viewing this session. Maybe together, light the inner spark. Have a very good evening, and thank you once again to our amazing speakers for your knowledge and for really enlightening us and how to, and how to look after ourselves. Let's connect again. We are always happy to connect with you, ladies, and to guide you and help you with the knowledge and to. Uh, release the questions and give you some answers. We can have another uh, event as well. And you also can uh, contact us directly, what you can see already, Instagram handle and over reset, Dr. Dipti and Nick, we are there. We are not running away. Yeah? It was a pleasure to be there. Thank you so much for having us over. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.